So yeah, my name's Stuart, here from Stroke Foundation. Um, and I'm gonna do a couple of things today. One is sneak in a little bit of information around stroke, um, just from a health, public health messaging point of view, but also try and give you an idea of, I guess where we're at with our journey of Salesforce and in payment transactions. Um, so, and I guess as we went into putting Salesforce in, for Stroke Foundation, it was really around having a single source of truth. This idea that we wanted a single view of our customers, whether they were engaged through fundraising or through other parts of the business. Um, but firstly, a little bit about us at Stroke Foundation. Um, you may not know, but stroke is one of Australia's biggest killers and a leading cause of disability. As it shows over there, a stroke occurs in Australia every 19 minutes. So it's a pretty big deal, maybe goes under the radar a little bit sometimes. Um, can I ask, it's kind of a personal question I guess, but does anyone either have a family member or a close friend who's had a stroke and been impacted by that? So there's, thanks, and, and there's about half a million Australians who are living with the impact of stroke. And so that often has an impact on families and on friends and the community. So it's quite a large impact when that grows. So Stroke Foundation is the only national organisation in Australia focused on stroke prevention, treatment and recovery. Some of our goals at the moment in terms of our strategy are to ensure that there are fewer strokes in Australia, to provide better healthcare and equal access to treatment that includes into rural and regional areas and to champion stroke research um, and try and make that equitable. And you can see we do a lot of um, programs to support stroke survivors and their families. So that'll be around young stroke, uh, stroke Line, My Stroke Journey, which is a little booklet they get coming out of hospital, and um, after, after Stroke Fact Sheets, so heaps of information. Just finally on stroke, um, stroke can either be a clot or a bleed, and you need to know the signs of stroke, and I'm going to come back to that at the end, because spaced repetition is the best way to learn. So, face, arm, speech and time. Remember fast, and you'll remember how someone is having a stroke, and you can call triple zero. So, as I mentioned, Salesforce, we moved there to become, I guess, a, a single system. Um, our, about five or six years ago at Stroke Foundation, we had systems sitting on servers that the fans in those servers were making funny noises and they were literally about to fall off the shelf. So we had a pretty dire situation with some of our systems. Um, we knew that we needed to become PCI compliant with our credit card handling, but also cloud-based. Um, and that was part of, across the board with our whole organisation, we were, we were running on thin clients and we had servers that we, we really didn't want to continue to maintain. So we also knew we needed better visibility of our data, so improved reporting and donation processing. And so when we made the move, we, we moved finally, four years ago, 20 years of fundraising uh, data. So it's about four and a half million records shifted across. So four years on, Last month, I went back and had a look at the numbers, it was a bit over 13,800 regular giving transactions actually happened on the 1st or the 15th of the month. Um, so we're now moving through a large volume of transactions each month using the payments to us uh, systems. So we have online forms, uh, third party platforms at, and Shopify and a batch entry tool which I'll talk about in a second. And these tools all come together to help us, I guess, have a far richer um, set of fundraising um, activities in one system. Um, previously, they all had to be either outsourced or manually imported, um, and we were using Donman before then. So it really did revolutionise fundraising for us, but it's revolutionised the whole organisation, the way we manage our constituents. So we're able to do fundraising engagement, um, manage our media engagement and our stories, um, some of our community fundraising, uh, health cases, I mentioned Stroke Line's one of our services, so that connects in now through cases. Um, and we can, as you mentioned, Jen, you can know the, the user profiles, and we can hive off some of that, I uh, guess, more um, sensitive health data to one side of the business. Um, we get feedbacks and complaints, and some of that's um, connected straight into our website. We put a, a complaint in on our website, goes straight in as a case in Salesforce. And our political engagement, obviously, as a health charity um, representing Stroke, it's important that we engage with the state and federal health departments in a really coordinated way. Um, and so it's helped, Salesforce has certainly helped us in a lot of those areas. So much, far more than just a fundraising product for us. In, in fact, fundraising wasn't the first um, area of business to be switched on to Salesforce. So improving donation processing. So it seems like, uh, you know, once you get, you get Salesforce going, it, it seems like it's not the sort of thing that you want to go back and, and dig up. It's also not the most interesting area of the business to go diving into. It, it's, it's not going to necessarily raise you a lot more money, but it's going to save you a lot of time and free up resources to do other important work. Um, so we uh, actually had a volunteer 
um, from the commercial world to come in and help us do a workshop on uh, lean management, the idea of reviewing processes, going through them step by step and understanding how does this process work? What actually is happening here? Getting the team together. And I think as Jan mentioned, some of the, this work that you do when you dive into something as a project, as a team, it has a cultural impact. It helped to bring the team together as well. Um, and they were there together working on the solution. It was their problem and their solution to solve. So the problem was we knew as an organisation, we had grown, let's call it back from say 2012, 2014, 2016, through that period, hundreds of thousands of new donors coming in through direct mail. Problem was, as quickly as it grew, they, they didn't hang around. So our, our mail volumes were dropping considerably. We, it, during that time, had signed on to some contracts for some equipment that was pretty high tech. We looked like a mail house in our storeroom. We had folders and inserters and mail openers. We had uh, scanners and optical character recognition software. It was, it was sophisticated. It was geared for thousands of donations per day coming in through the mail. We were no longer that type of charity. We were moving towards regular giving and some more digital fundraising with a mix of telemarketing. Sort of a, a broader spread of um, programs. So we knew we were slow and expensive and complicated. We needed to move to become efficient, scalable and effective, cost effective. And, and part of that um, flexibility that we needed was because, uh, I don't know, but some charities, it, it's more seasonal. Uh, tax time, Christmas time become... You know, your you donor team explode um, trying to, to process the transactions and get in touch with donors, but the rest of the time it's quiet. So it's pointless having this expensive um, setup sitting around. So what we did was we removed the flatbed scanner. Um, so after we got the butcher's paper out and did step by step, what does this process actually look like? We realised that um, it would actually be simpler and more effective to go back to barcode scanners than have optical character recognition. Um, Mostly because we were saving time because we weren't scanning the forms, then we weren't updating the software to get the database into that system so that it matches that system. Um, we had to then visually verify the scans, which weren't always 100% correct anyway because people's handwriting is not that good with numbers. Um, and then manipulating data and then importing the donations and finally transacting them. So if you're just getting 100 donations in, in a day, that work's wasted. Um, so our new solution saved us about an hour worth of work just to process, process um, 100 donations. So really happy now that we've moved to a system that's with barcode scanners and also a batch entry tool that provides actually better accuracy. So we've improved the amount of the, the as I mentioned, when people write you know, $33 on a, a form, it's, you know, a, a system's not going to be able to recognise the number three every time accurately. Whereas now we can put that in one by one in a very accurate way uh, into a batch entry system that collates up the amount there and it needs to match the amount that we thought it was going to be. And, and before it's banked and processed, we can actually go back and edit that and change it. And it's just, at the end of the day, far easier and simpler. Um, our reconciliation is far simpler. It's by batch instead of day and into the bank. That's a lot easier to track. Um, error checking and the location of those, data, those uh, details on forms is easier to find. So sometimes we get someone calling in saying, hey, I didn't donate, can you prove it? We can go back and find the form really easily now. Um, and allows uh, donor detail updates as you go, um, and it's easy to train and transfer. And this is important because being from Melbourne, we were in lockdown for <laughs> a few times during uh, the last couple of years and had to transfer our donation processing interstate. Um, and at that point, we were able to pull up um, our barcode systems. We were able to get batch entry going in interstate with brand new casual staff um, from a, you know, within a couple of days, we're up and running. Um, so that, that flexibility wouldn't have existed if we had to move large equipment um, around the country. Um, and the future. So for us, the journey continues. We are, um, sorry, my kids watch Pokemon a lot and that just sounded like Pokemon to me. So. But um, uh, we're integrating more platforms. So we've got community fundraising and appeals and acquisition. And that space is constantly changing with a, a lot of other um, third party platforms coming up and doing different things. And we'll, we'll need to continue to integrate um, the, the, the large volume of um, other platforms we're starting to engage with. Um, our tokenized card data is coming in from suppliers now, and we've got most of our face-to-face -face acquisition suppliers now tokenizing and sending us tokens. We're doing that with telemarketing as well. Um, new payment methods, so BPay is on board now. We're getting post bill pay and QR codes engaged. And, and a lot of this activity is really driven by 
what we think is coming around the corner, which is the removal of checks. And at the moment, we're at $1.2 million through the door in checks per year. So we need to uh, manage that risk and, and get these other um, channels happening. Um, we want to implement marketing automation and, and some automated bank reconciliation. So we've got some dreams, some vision. Uh, hopefully we can get that happening next year or two. But it is, it is a bit like Jane said, the, the minimum viable product is, is something that it's, is easier to go live with with Salesforce and then it's easy to build along the way and we're still on that journey doing that as well. I said I'd come back to this, so if you don't remember, please remember the fast signs of stroke and help to save the life of someone you know or love. Um, so thank you.